It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father as well, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking? We're getting real close to the end of the year here. Very depressed today, sir. Depressed? What's happening, yes. Bob? What's on your mind? But this fabulous year, 2017, coming to an end. I don't want it to end. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're having that much fun. I mean, who knows? 2018 could be even better, Bob. I'm looking forward to it, right? Well, it's been a crazy, crazy week. I mean, it's been Bitcoin mania with Bitcoin hitting a $255 billion market capitalization, Bob, this past week, which would make it one of the biggest stocks in the S&P 500 index right now. What do you make of it? What I make of it is I'm going to keep buying stocks in the S&P 500. <laughs> so you're not bullish on Bitcoin <laughs> is what you're telling me. You know, I like things that I understand. And uh, one of my Bobisms is never invest something you don't understand. And I have yet to talk to anybody that fully understands Bitcoin or the mania that's around it. I agree wholeheartedly. And I'm sticking with the Bobisms as well. I'm not putting my money in uh, Bitcoin. I'm putting it into good old fashioned stocks. Well, we have a great show this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about the financial crossword puzzle. Just like it's impossible to solve the entire crossword puzzle if all the words aren't correct, your financial plan isn't really complete unless you have all the right solutions in place. Bob and I are going to address some of the critical areas you might be missing. We're going to talk about bad advice when it comes to investing and planning. There's no shortages of bad opinions out there. Bob and I are going to discuss some of the people in your life who have good intentions, but often give you bad financial advice. Along with this week's financial pornography, there's a lot of stuff out there in the news, the financial media we want you to avoid. And on our Spotlight segment today, we have Frankie Lagrateria, one of our star financial advisors here. She's going to be on the show, and she's going to talk about a case a real retirement plan she worked on, and some of the mistakes, or what we call pain points, this couple is making with their planning so you can avoid those same mistakes. So let's hop right to it. Bob, have you ever done a crossword puzzle, just out of curiosity? You know, Ryan, I always try to tackle the New York Times crossword puzzle, and it's because of the New York Times crossword puzzle why I gave up on being an expert at crossword puzzles and becoming an expert at asset allocation. See, you know, it's a great metaphor, you know, for investing. And the nice thing about having an asset allocated approach to your goals, you only have to be approximately correct. The crossword puzzle doesn't work that way. That's true. And if you miss one word, get one word wrong, it screws up the rest of the crossword puzzle. But I'd also argue, you know, like a crossword puzzle, financial planning, you really want to have a lot of your critical areas done correctly because having one of those areas done incorrectly can ruin your whole retirement plan. And I think right now with the markets at all time highs, the bullish spirits are out. You know, one of the biggest mistakes you can make right now is not having the right or too much risk in your portfolio, Bob. That's so true, Ryan. And it's uh, when you talk about risk, you know, I often say you should take the risk in your portfolio down to the sleeping point. What did I mean by that? Well, basically, that means to me is let's face it: markets are volatile, and along the way, I know it's hard to believe right now, markets do go down, and when they go down. Are you still able to sleep at night? Does your portfolio fluctuate so much that it keeps you up all night long? Well, why do people have such a hard time with volatility? It's a fact of life. I think it's more the emotions around volatility. And I think it's easy to look, you know, when you look back and say, oh, you know, it's it's easy to be invested in the market. Long term, the stock market does great. But along the way, we forget how emotional it is. You know, when the market pulled back in 2008, remember everyone in the financial media was telling us it's apocalypse now get out. It's very hard to actually weather those storms and stay invested. Well, Rod, do you have any idea who created volatility? Bob, it's the market gods. Everyone knows that. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. You know, and God created volatility for one reason, is to keep the emotional people poor. See, it's the uninformed, 
uneducated investor who makes bad emotional decisions. It's the informed, educated investor who benefits from volatility. That's why it's so important to have a diversified portfolio, right? To have the proper asset allocation. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear those two words, my mind goes numb. It's kind of like that uh, adult speaking in the Peanuts cartoon. Wah, wah, wah. You know, asset allocation, <laughs> diversification. You know, I think it's really something that it blanderizes investing. What you really have to do is adopt a process-driven strategy versus an event-driven strategy. What does that mean to you, Rai? I mean, give me an idea. What is process-driven investing? Right. Process-driven is where, first off, you have to know what your goals are, right? We always say, if you just want the market to go up, that's a financial wish, not a financial goal. And what we mean by that is put tangible numbers in place. Like, you know, how much money do you need a month in retirement? Have you run those numbers? You need to. You know, what other variables come into play? What's inflation going to look like? What's medical costs going to look like? Once you know that, you can go back and you can build what we would call a customized plan, Bob, that essentially gets you to your goals and doing it with what we would call that sleep point that you were talking about. Yeah, but right, what's the problem with the average investor coming to you and saying, my goal is to make money. Is making money a goal? No. Again, financial wish. There's nothing tangible in saying that, that you can actually articulate when it comes to building your portfolio. Now, if you just sat there and said, you know, my goal is to make money, our question to you is, why do you need to make money, right? Why do you need to make money, right? Why do you need your money to grow? Because I don't want to do this forever, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? You don't want to. You don't want to work forever. I know it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. I like doing the radio, but I don't know if I want to work forever. Yeah, you know, there's nothing else out there that's uh, more fun than than going to work nine to five, or actually, you put in about eighteen hour days. You don't want to do that for the rest of your life. Not for the rest of my life. I can do it for for a while longer, but uh, not forever. See, that's what it's all about. That's what event driven strategies are. It's about making money. That's what these, you know, this financial pornography we see every day talks about, you know, buying this, selling that, trading here, investing here. It's all about making money and it has nothing to do with investing. It's all event driven. What you need is a process driven strategy where you invest based on your goals. That reigns in your emotions. It helps you to invest to achieve those goals. And, you know, what are some of the problems, Rye, that get in the way? What are some of the things that get in the way of you achieving goals? I mean, I would say first and foremost, it's our human nature. We, by default, are bad investors because when the market goes up, we don't want to miss out on the action. We end up putting more money into the markets, taking more risk when we shouldn't. And on the flip side, as hard as it is to believe, when the markets are down, it's the best time to buy. But if you're not already in a proactive position to take advantage of those things, you're out of luck. And I think this is the perfect example right now, Bob. We're at all-time highs on the market right now. We're in the midst of one of the greatest bull markets of all time. Have you taken profits on your portfolio? Have you reallocated your portfolio to put away for a rainy day? Has your advisor talked to you about that? If you're not making those moves proactively, you're going to be in big, big trouble the next time the market corrects. You know, the other day, Ry, I was reading about the 87 bear market and back in the 80s when you were just a young man uh, attending grade school. Hey. But, uh, you know, if you had a portfolio that was 100% invested in a stock or in the stock market, you didn't make a lot of money going forward versus a person who followed a more balanced approach. Because when stocks go down, unless you have a portfolio that's diversified, unless you have assets that go up when stocks go down, you don't have any extra money to invest when the opportunity presents itself. Exactly right. So it's two things. You know, you need to protect yourself against the downside, but when the downside comes, do you have money in other places you can utilize to buy? Because it's the best time to buy. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a process-driven strategy. I'm just winging it. I have an event-driven strategy or no strategy at all. Here's your shot to get a real goal-based investment plan. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our famous total financial master plan. That's where we look at everything. If you bring in all your statements, we're going to load everything into a personalized portal for you where we can give you a real holistic view of your total portfolio, map out your dreams and goals, and we're going to study your portfolio and break it down to all the important variables. Are you taking too much risk in your portfolio right now? We're going to look at all your accounts, look at what pitfalls or what dangers lie ahead in your portfolio so that you can be fully protected. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. What kind of income or cash flow does your portfolio produce? Bob and I are going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at fees. Are you paying a lot of fees, hidden costs on your portfolio? We're going to break down all the costs. 
All those hidden costs in your mutual funds, annuities, insurance products, break down all the fees on your portfolio to see if we can reduce the cost. And then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies we've been working on for over 40 years to make sure your money's going to outlive you. You're not going to outlive your money. All you need to do is give us a call or text us at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. For the next 10 callers who have saved over $200,000 for retirement, our team at Payne Capital Management will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Don't miss out. Just give us a call or text us at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Rye Payne. We are No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer here at Payne Capital Management. And I realize that I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but the market hit all-time record highs again this week. And with the year-end in sight, it looks like the market will be 12 for 12 this year in monthly gains. No wonder I sound like a broken record. The only problem you might have in this world of digital technology is explaining to your grandchildren exactly what a broken record sounds like. Well, anyway, Chairwoman of the Federal Reserve, Janet Yellen, held her last press conference this week following the Federal Open Market Committee's decision to hike the Fed fund rate by one quarter of 1%. That brings the target rate now to one and a quarter to one and a half percent. Now, this was mostly viewed as a dovish hike, and the bond market actually rallied on the announcement. In other words, bonds went up while their yields and the dollar declined. Now, for some time now, the Federal Reserve has been acknowledging that stock market valuations are high. But Chairwoman Aunt Jellen, affectionately known here as Aunt Janet, said, the fact that these valuations are high doesn't mean they're necessarily overvalued. You see, history shows that valuation doesn't pretend lackluster returns in the near term. She also stated, we are in a low interest rate environment lower than we've been in past decades. She said that's a factor that supports higher valuations. Now, our favorite investor here at Payne Capital Management, Warren Buffett, has also argued the same point. He said recently, everything in valuation gets back to interest rates. To be clear, Aunt Janet's not predicting future stock market gains. She's simply stating that the fact that valuations are high doesn't mean they're necessarily overvalued. You know, I say, Aunt Janet, you did a fabulous job as Fed chairwoman, and she presided over the least volatile, most steady market rally of our lifetime. She made us all wealthier, and for that, we thank her, and we wish her a happy and safe retirement. Aunt Janet, you've earned it. Now, if you're wondering, am I going to have a safe and happy retirement? Have I earned it? Am I in a position to achieve the returns the market so generously gives? Why sit there and wonder when you can know? Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. Give us a call or text us at 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne, and we're No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. This is No Pain, No Gain. Now, back to the show. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. One of Bob and I's biggest initiatives at Payne Capital Management is education. We want to give you simple, practical advice that you can use to make the best decisions on your finances, avoid all the noise, and give you things that are intuitive. And our latest guide you can download for free, seven smart year-end tips for the savvy investor, just a couple tweaks you can make to your portfolio. We have two weeks left in the year that you can make right now to help performance avoid taxes on your portfolio. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. Again, the word bullish to 555-888. And you get a free copy of our seven smart year-end tips for the savvy investor. Just a couple tweaks you can make on your portfolio now with two weeks left in the year. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888 and get a free copy. Text the word bullish at 555-888. 
And in this segment, we want to talk about the best of intentions. The American writer Gore Vidal once wrote, at any given moment, public opinion is a chaos of superstition, misinformation, and prejudice. And nowhere can this be truer than when it comes to people's opinions about money. And Bob, let's face it, especially around the holidays with a lot of relatives, a lot of friends, everyone has an opinion about investing. And I find sometimes that's the worst advice you can possibly get. Let's talk about our friends when they give us investment advice. What's the problem with that? Well, there's a lot of problems with that, Rai. First of all, no one likes to be wrong. You know, it's like I've, I've never met anyone who goes to a casino who loses. How about you? That's right. <laughs> I was just going to say the same thing. They're building these multi-million dollar casinos, but you're always winning. And uh, something seems fishy about that. Yeah, there's something very fishy about that. So when somebody gives you advice or a stock tip, it's usually something that they feel pretty confident about. But if you feel confident about something, it means it's either already up or you're going to be dead wrong. I'll give you a good example. I've been doing this for over 42 years, believe it or not. And, you know, whenever I have, in those 42 years, Rod, whenever I had a stock that went completely bankrupt, that just was wiped out, totally gone, and you have to tell the exchange why you're writing this stock off because there's no longer a market for it, 100% of the time, the reason was, you know, how you were given the idea was a stock tip from a buddy on the golf course. So our number one rule at Payne Capital Management, you're not allowed to buy any stocks that were recommended to you by your buddy or your friend on the golf course. Unless it was Bitcoin four years ago, but that, <laughs> that's in retrospect. No, no. You would get that uh, recommendation yeah. at 17000 yeah. not at a dollar. <laughs> yeah, the, the, other, the other problem with that too with friends and relatives is what you have to remember is your retirement plan is very specific to you. So, you know, whether sure. it's a decision about taking Social Security or early or later, it may sound very pragmatic and very, it might be the best decision for your friends or your brother in law's case or sister in law's case, but it might not be the best decision for you because when it comes to your financial plan, we always talk about holistic planning. Well, there's a lot of things that come into play that are unique to your situation, whether it be the taxes you're going to pay, how long you're going to work. So your strategy really shouldn't look exactly like anybody else's. And I say this a lot, Bob, but I think rule of thumbs are a real dangerous thing when it comes to investing. You know, the kind of blanketed ideas about how you should invest your money typically don't work just because planning is so, so customized. You know, another place that can be dangerous is we all love our CPA. We trust our accountant blindly, but a lot of times when it comes to investment advice, that's not really their expertise. No, so true, Ry. I mean, it's a, let's talk about a CPA versus the financial advisor. You know, they're both entrepreneurs. They typically both own their own business, but wouldn't you think a CPA is a much more conservative person just in general? Oh yeah, CPA is probably the most conservative person. You know the old joke, Bob, what's a wild night out for an accountant? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> they wore the red sweater. <laughs> oh, they wear the red sweater. Oh, man, that is a wild night. But you know, over the years, right, I've had CPAs call me up and, and say, well, my client asked for some advice. Our mutual client asked for some advice, and I don't think they should own anything more than a three-month T-bill. These things aren't bad ideas. They're dangerous ideas because you have to overcome inflation. Everybody's different. It's just like taking advice from a friend or a CPA. You know, when the market was really down big in 2008, 2009, were people telling you how the opportunity was so fabulous in the stock market? No, they were telling you about how bad things were and how happy they were that they bailed out. What kind of advice is that? That's dangerous. That's actually, that's malpractice in my opinion. Yeah. And I think that's something you need to do. I mean, I think it's always important for your financial advisor and CPA to work together, but make sure the CPA is giving you tax advice Make sure your investment advisor is giving you the investment advice, not the opposite. And ideally, they're working together and having those conversations together. And the other one we talk and we harp on all the time is obviously the financial media. Now, you know, I'm on CNBC from time to time, Fox News and things like that. And you realize a lot of these quote unquote experts are entertainers, not really experts. I think, you know, a lot of these people giving advice on TV. They usually have an ax to grind. You know, they're promoting some sort of product or their own services, or really it's just, you know, maybe they were a sportscaster before they were a financial newscaster. It's a very dangerous place to get advice, in my experience, Bob. It truly is, right? Because they've got to keep you they've got to keep you interested every day. If you were on CNBC every day like you are this week, they wouldn't invite you back all the time because a lot of your strategies are long term, they're holistic. It's about helping a client achieve their goals. 
but you know, financial media is about what you have to do right now. And, you know, let's, you know, it's always breaking news. Well, the market isn't all about breaking news. Investing and successful investing is not about breaking news and what's happening right now. It's about achieving goals and dreams and investing properly. So financial experts, CPAs, attorneys, friends, most dangerous place in the world to get your investment advice, unless you need tax losses. Yeah, that's true. That's a good way of putting it, Bob. Yeah. So when it comes to your goals and everything else, sit down with a fiduciary, a financial planner to work out those goals, but work with your CPA. And I think it is important to to ask around and get second opinion on things as well. But if you're going to get a second opinion, don't get it from your, your brother at uh, Hanukkah or Christmas dinner. You know, get it from another professional. The same thing, you know, if you're going to go to a doctor, you may go get a second opinion, but you're certainly not going to get that advice from your sister-in-law. So yeah, right. I think the- it comes back to a process-driven strategy. Once you have a process-driven strategy, you lay out your goals, you lay out the history of the markets, the truth is self-evident. It's not a matter of what's the right thing to do. It's so evident what you need to do, you know, to achieve your goals. So any great CPA will back up a great fiduciary, you know, so we'll stick the process, we'll stay away from events. And I think that's the best advice we can give people today. Rai, I have a question for you. Yes, Bob. Whenever you ask a new client on a scale of, of one to 10, how organized are you financially? What do they typically tell you? I'm going to say the average is, let's be real, we're probably a four. We probably have somewhat of an idea what's going on, but not a great idea or grasp. When you ask them where would they like to be, what do they tell you? Bob, don't we all want to be a 10? (laughs) Of course. And if you would like to rank a 10 in your financial life, if you would like to have all of your financial documents and data organized and simplified, all you need to do is be one of the next 10 callers. If you've saved over $200,000 for retirement, my son, Rye, and I will create for you your own customized 360 financial portal. This means all of your account numbers, all those passwords, security questions for everything with a statement, everything with online access, simplified and organized into one simple financial portal. Wouldn't it be amazing if you were financially organized? If something happened to you, think how easy it would be for your children or your spouse to keep your life working or transition your financial affairs in a worst case scenario. If you're one of the next 10 callers, here's what we're going to do for you. We're gonna tie it all together into your own personal 360 financial portal that will give you a window into your financial future. Your wealth projections, your goals, your goals will be updated daily in real time to help you keep score on your progress towards those goals. Not just today, but every day for the rest of your life. We'll also answer that age old question, Will you outlive your money or will your money outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for almost 40 years, over four decades. We've been helping families like yours get from their financial point A to their point B, to their goals, to their dreams, with their values, with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Get a holistic review of your finances. Text or call 844 plan NYC, that's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, call or text 844-PLAN-NYC, that's 844-752-6692. Get a review of everything, a portal to look at your entire financial picture at 844-PLAN-NYC. Call or text 844 844- 752-6692. Again, 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. Bob, what terrible profane financial media did you find out there this week in the world of financial pornography? Hey, Rai, great news. I've been waiting for this all year. We finally have Barron's Wall Street forecast for 2018. We have the top investment strategists tell us exactly what's going to happen next year. You know what the problem with that is? 
They'll probably get it wrong again like they do every year, Bob. <laughs> Their projections anyway. So, so true. And these people, they get paid a lot of money. And Warren Buffett so famously say, the reason we have investment strategists is to make fortune tellers look good. And boy, did they make fortune tellers look good last year. What would you guess the average prediction was for the growth of the stock market last year from these wizards of Wall Street? I'm going to guess because they typically come in around the same averages. I'm going to say they all, on average, guess the market or the S&P 500 was going to be up around 10% this year. That's my guess. Yeah, they, they were exactly right, right? 10% is where we were halfway through the year because we're going to end up the year over 20%. And that's just on oh, the S&P 500. They missed yeah, a big move in emerging markets up 30%. And you know what they were talking about last year? They were talking about this is going to be a year of fear. What do you think they're calling well, they this year? They talk about polar opposite. I'm going to guess since the market's up over 20% this year, they're completely changing their tune and they're bullish going into 2018. Very bullish. And the thing is, that's just human nature. You know, as average normal human beings, we tend to predict the future based on our most recent experience. What's our recent experience been? <laughs> the market's been going up, Bob. <laughs> market's going up. So they were dead wrong last year, and they're probably going to be dead wrong this year. And the problem I have with these guys, Rye, is when they make these predictions, people actually believe them. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, I think a good analogy would be the weather, right? I mean, it's like, yeah. let's face it, these analysts have more data than you and I you know, could ever. They forget more data than you and I have in our minds right now. They're looking at everything when they make these decisions about where the economy is going to go and the stock market's going to go. And just like the weatherman has meteorologists out there with all the best scientific equipment to figure out what's going to happen, you just can't predict the future. It's impossible. And here you have the brightest minds on Wall Street. They can't do it. So why in the heck are we sitting here trying to invest based on what someone's prediction in the market's going to be where it's being proved impossible time and time again? It's the basis of financial pornography, right? They assume that right. everybody invests to make money. They don't know about investing on, you know, based on your goals. They're not process driven, they're event driven. And in order to keep their job, they make these same predictions year in and year out because if they're approximately correct, they get the, you know, predict again next year. They get that's the reason. Their job. That's the reason. That's their yeah. purpose, unfortunately. And the other thing is, and this brings up a really good point with your own portfolio, is we say this a lot at Pain Capital Management, is anticipation is the most dangerous thing you can possibly do. And what that means really is you don't want to anticipate that we think next year interest rates are going up. We don't want to anticipate next year that the market's going to go up or go down. Because really, Bob, and you've said this a lot in probably more of a Bobism, you know, the reason why there's surprises in the market is why? Well, they're unexpected. You know, it's, um, you know, there's unexpected moves in the market simply because they're unexpected. Everything else that's known is already priced in. You know, it's that's not right. just so, these forecasters, right? It's these economists too. They had a Harvard trained economist on the other day telling us about what was going to happen now in the economy. And fortunately, the, you know, the anchor on the TV show said, well, you know, you were dead wrong last year. What makes you think you're so right now? Yeah. No, that's the important thing. When it comes to your portfolio is you don't want to anticipate anything. You want to make sure you have every basis covered. And that's really what it comes down to. You're talking about a goal-based portfolio. You know, We also talk about being what we call an all-weather portfolio, right? You want to make sure that, let's say interest rates do go up next year. Is your portfolio prepared for that? You know, Are you in bond funds or do you have a bond strategy that addresses the fact that rates could go up? Uh, you know, If the market goes down next year, do you have enough safety in your portfolio? If next year emerging markets are the best performer again, do you have those places covered in your portfolio? So I think the, the real issue, Bob, is have a portfolio that's soulless. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't factor in anticipating things, but it's just ready for everything. And this is a good time of year to start looking at that. Well, Another that's why thing I'm so that I found- proud of our portfolio, Rye, because we own the best performing stocks in the market. It, and we're going to own them next year. Now, the only problem is I won't be able to tell you what they are until the end of next year, but we do own them because we own everything. Everything. Exactly. So you need to own everything in your portfolio, which also brings me to the financial pornography that I found out there. And this is actually Ooh. more against financial pornography. What do we hear about when we hear about stocks right now, Bob? What stocks come to mind when we're listening to these prognosticators on TV? What stocks are talked about almost numbing, numbingly at this point this year? Well, it's always the FANG stocks. That's right. So you have your Alphabet, Google, you have Amazon, Facebook, Apple, I mean, over and over again. And I think one thing that we do forget, and you and I look at this, is those stocks are very, very expensive right now. 
you know, Amazon trades at 144 times forward earnings. What that means in layman's terms is it's very, very expensive. And one writer that I found and wrote a great article says these stocks are basically priced for what we call perfection. That mm-hmm. means that their growth has to be so astronomical and they already have a large portion of the world's population as their customer base already. It's going to be very hard to move the needle with the growth rates that they're priced to right now. And just another reason why you want to make sure that your portfolio is not just concentrated in these stocks that you're hearing about over and over again, because when stocks get this expensive, they typically don't perform as well as they have in the past. No, that's uh, that's why you hear so many people talking about the market. They're only talking about 500 companies. They don't talk about small capitalization stocks or mid capitalization stocks or non-U.S. companies. You know, the, as you pointed out a couple of weeks ago, right? The number one performing technology stock was Chinese. It wasn't U.S. So we tend to have this U.S. bias. And when we hear about what to own today, it's what people know as opposed to really having a portfolio of you know, well-diversified investments. That's right. If you're sitting there thinking to yourself, you know, you don't know what you own in your portfolio. A lot of times you may have lots of different accounts at lots of different places with lots of different portfolio investment names. They may all own the same thing, aka your Alphabet, Amazon, Facebook, Apple. If you want to get a real analysis and look at how properly diversified you really are, here's your shot to do it. We have a couple slots left. If you're one of the next few callers, and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's a holistic review of everything. We're going to load in all of your statements, all of your assets into a personalized portal for you so we can start looking at the big picture, model out what retirement looks like, how much money you're going to need, inflation, medical costs, all those different things. And we're going to do our famous portfolio x-ray where we analyze every portfolio you have, we're going to look at that diversification. Do you have too much money concentrated in one area? Do you have too much money in Facebook, Apple, Amazon? Do you even know? We're going to point out the flaws or pitfalls in your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden cost in investment products. You need to know what your portfolio is costing you. Bob and I are going to do a full fee analysis to see if you're being overcharged on your investments. And we're going to look at income. Income is so important in retirement, much more reliable than capital appreciation. We're going to look at all the income your portfolio produces, and we're going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together, and we're going to run the numbers to see, is your money going to outlive you or are you going to outlive your money utilizing strategies now? We have literally worked on our family for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So let's get ready for 2018 by giving us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. Call or text us at 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few lucky callers with over 200,000 saved for retirement, our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. There's no obligation and there's no cost, but you need to call 844-PLAN-NYC. Call or text 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Rye. We are No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. How's that saying go? No pain, no gain? It's the name of our show, too, but we spell pain, P-A-Y-N-E. It's no pain, no gain, financial radio. And one of Bob and I's main goals here at Pain Capital is to educate you. You need simple, practical advice to make the best decisions about your retirement, investing. There's a lot of noise out there. We try to cut through it for you every single week. And that's why we came up with our newest guide, seven smart year-end tips for the savvy investor. And we know you're a savvy investor and you want to take advantage of it. Feel free to download our latest guide at 555-888. You just want to text the word bullish. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. You can get our newest guide, a couple of year-end strategies. There's two weeks left. You can still use on your portfolio to optimize taxes, improve your performance, some simple tips. Go ahead and download for free our seven smart year-end tips for the savvy investor. Text the word bullish to 555-888. Again, that's the word bullish to 555-888 and get our latest guide. And if you want to learn more about 
No Pain, No Gain, Bob and I, you can always check us out on the World Wide Web. Just simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. And yes, Bob's hair is real. (laughs) Check it out. (laughs) And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I will answer your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we'll answer it right here on the show every week. And this week, like every week, we did get some great questions. And the first question comes in, Bob, from Lisa who's in Farmingdale, Long Island. She writes in, Bob, I'd really like to meet with a financial advisor, but my husband says we're fine handling our investments ourselves. Is it okay to do this without help? Well, of course it is, Lisa. It's your money. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't mean you're going to have success at investing. You know, Rye, I grew up on a plumbing truck working for your grandfather, and um, I could actually repipe an entire house. You know the reason why you don't want me to repipe your entire house? Because you would complain the whole time? I wouldn't just complain. I would do it very poorly because I used to do it when I was eight years old. You know, I haven't been on a plumbing truck or touched a plumbing tool since then. So, yeah, maybe I know how to do it. I know how you should solder a pipe. My guess is your house would be underwater within a year if I were, you know, if I were trying to be your plumber. So, yeah, anybody can do plumbing. Anybody can paint. Anybody can do surgery, right? (laughs) Except I wouldn't recommend it. The problem with do-it-yourselfers when it comes to financial planning and it comes to investing is you don't know what you don't know. Right. And, you know, the problem with investing is risk isn't truly understood, you know, prior to making that investment decision. Risk is only known in hindsight. Now, after 42 years, we understand a lot of things that were risky. And we learned the hard way, right, right? I mean, over the years, a lot of our yeah. clients pay a steep tuition for us to be as good as we are because we made those mistakes. You know, you want to have someone who knows what the implications are of decisions that you make while you're making investments. Now, it doesn't mean you can't do it yourself, but why not have someone check it? You know, it always, it's not a bad idea to have a checkup from an expert to see if you're doing okay. Yeah, you know, I I look at it, I use this analogy a lot. You know, I think that the thing is, if you're doing it yourself, you always think, well, then I have to relinquish control. And if you've been running your money for a long time, that's a very hard thing to do psychologically. Uh, and I always look at it like it's more like having a sounding board. And the analogy I use often, Bob, is you know I'm, I play guitar. It's one of my hobbies. I'm not mm-hmm. a bad guitarist. You know I certainly play a lot. I've played in bands and things like that. But people are always surprised when I say I have a guitar teacher. In fact, I sought out one of the best guitarists in New York City to give me lessons because I know for someone who's been playing since he was... You know, literally, he was eight years old. He's played way more professionally than I have. He knows a lot of the tricks of the trade that I don't know. And I certainly don't feel like I'm giving up control. But now I have a sounding board and I have someone with a lot more experience that can show me how to get to where I want to get to a lot quicker and a lot more effectively. And I really think that's the same thing when you use a financial advisor is you have someone who can you can bounce ideas off of that can help you get to where you need to get to, but you're part of that process. And I think that's always the thing when you're a do-it-yourselfer, you fear is giving up control. But in reality, you're not an island anymore. You have someone that can help you make better decisions. And let's face it, as you're getting close to retirement, you're in retirement, you know, you're upping the ante there's a lot more risk at play here because you can't screw up. You don't have the time to make it up. Yeah, and I agree, right? It's almost like having a trainer or a coach is they hold you accountable. I mean, everybody knows what they need to do. It's hard to do sometimes what you need to do. It's good to have someone there as a guide to keep you on track, to make sure you make those contributions, to make sure you you know make those hard decisions, which sometimes, you know, the investing becomes very emotional and it's hard for you to make that decision based on fear or greed, whatever's driving you at the time. The next question comes in from Beth. She's in Red Bank, New Jersey. She writes in, Ryan, I could sell my house right now for 500000 and I only owe about 100000 I'm only 57, so young, but I'm thinking about selling it now by buying a much smaller place and using the extra cash to retire on. Is this a bad idea? At face value, I say it's a pretty good idea. And I think that's something you have to start to look at as you get close to retirement. And Beth here, Bob, she's, I mean, she's in that financial red zone. It sounds like she's getting close to retirement. You know, lowering costs, a good example, Bob, you sold your house, our childhood home about three years ago, and that had a big impact on your expenses. Well, it really did, Rye, because uh, I was paying a huge fee 
to keep all of your artifacts, all of your trophies and your medals from Villanova, you know, cool in the summertime. And I was paying a lot of money to keep them warm in the wintertime. Can you put a price so with, on that? Uh, you know, downsizing, you can save a lot of money because after a while, after your children are grown and the house is empty, you know, how many rooms do you really need? And what your mom and I found out is we only used about two or three, you know, out of that huge home that you used to live in. Yeah. The other part about it too is in Beth's case, if you net, let's say 400,000, if you still 100,000, now that 400,000 can generate income for you. So instead of being an, an income suck <laughs> where it's taking money out of your pocket, you can start to produce some income on it. And that, that's one of the critical things when it comes to building a retirement plan. You know, this is something we talk about a lot on the show. When you go from what we call wealth accumulation to wealth distribution, when you're going to start thinking about living off the land or living off your portfolio, income is a critical part of that. And that's a big part of having money in a portfolio is it's a passive income stream. It's not like a rental property or it's sweat equity that can start working for you as opposed to when it comes to real estate, a lot of times, you know, costing you. If you're like Lisa and you're wondering, do I need a financial advisor or like Beth, should I downsize my home or should I pay off the mortgage? You know, why sit there and wonder what you could know? If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved at least $200,000 for retirement, my son and I will run for you your total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation, there's no cost. And if you're one of the next few callers, here's exactly what we'll do for you. We're going to review your taxes, not just based on what you paid last year, but what's happening now with the new tax bill. We're going to look at your estate docs. We're going to look at how things are titled. To make sure that your estate plan is not an IOU to the IRS. And lastly, we're going to look at all your investment statements. You know, we don't want you to sit there and tear through these statements at the end of the year. You know, just throw them into a shopping bag, make an appointment. We'll break it down for you onto our investment analysis spreadsheet. This is a simple three-page document that looks at everything that's critical to having a successful investment portfolio, diversification, cost, and income. We want to make sure that you're truly diversified, that you're getting the returns for the risk that you're currently taking. We want to look at all the costs, including the fees, what we call the hidden fees. You know, there's nothing worse than being overcharged by your own portfolio. And lastly, we want to make sure you're optimizing the income that's available and that that portfolio can dependably distribute on an annual basis. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into a wealth projection utilizing strategies that my son and I have now been perfecting for over four decades. We want to help take your family from your personal financial point A to your point B your goals, your dreams, your values with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Get a holistic review of your assets at 844-PLAN-NYC. Call or text 844-752-6692. We have a few slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, get a holistic review at 844-PLAN-NYC. Call or text 844 844- 752-6692. Here's your shot to model out what retirement can look like, where you are in retirement at 844-PLAN-NYC. Call or text 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Here's this week's spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I want to make sure that you're as educated as possible when it comes to your retirement and investing. And there's so much information out there. We like to break it down into simple, pragmatic tools that you can use. And that's why we put together our latest guide, Seven Smart Year-End Tips for the Savvy Investor. There's still two weeks left in the year. We put together some simple things that you can do on your portfolio to optimize taxes, enhance performance. So if you want to take a look, check it out. You can text the word BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Seven Smart Year-End Tips for the Savvy Investor. There's some common sense things you can do here at the end of the year. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555 555- 888. And now it's time for my favorite part of the show. And for our favorite part of the show, we have one of the greatest financial guests you could possibly have, Frankie 
Lagrateria, one of our financial advisors here at Payne Capital Management. Everybody wants to be one of Frankie's financial friends. Good morning, Frankie. Thanks for being on the show. Ooh, what an intro. Good morning. I came in hot this morning. There's a lot of pressure on you now. <laughs> <laughs> and this is our spotlight segment. Every week, what we like to do is take a real case and we just talk about a retirement plan and some of the mistakes this couple was making. And you and I went out and worked on a case together. Well, you did most of the work. So <laughs> let's be honest. So why don't you give us the rundown on the case you worked on and some of the flaws or what we call pain points, P-A-Y-N-E, that this couple had. All right. So the, uh, the main pain point that this couple had is actually fear. So this couple yes. had you know several different investments and last year during the election, they were so afraid of what was going to happen that they sold out of everything and bought gold. Right. So the oh. market proceeded to go straight up and gold went straight down. Exactly. Their main concern was that they were just so afraid of, of losing everything that they had and they didn't know what was going on and they didn't have anyone to talk to. So they just opted out. They just took, they just sold out of everything and bought gold. And I don't know about you, Ryan and Bob, but that is the number one fear tactic that I hear is that when people are scared, and this is very common, when people are scared, that is always what they suggest to me. Frankie, let's sell out of everything and buy gold. Sounds so and, empowering just to sell everything and make that kind of decision thinking it's you're reducing risk, but you're actually increasing risk exponentially. Because here's the problem with gold. You know, it's really heavy, right? You can't carry it around. It doesn't pay a dividend. And last I checked, you can't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> or it doesn't taste very good. <laughs> and the funny thing is, it's just as risky as stocks. Gold prices move with the same volatility that the stock market does. Yeah, and actually, uh, commodities in general have a very low correlation to the market. So say we were in you know, an area like the, the dot-com bubble, where from like 1990 all the way to 2000, that's like 10 years, where you're, you're in low, not doing much. And because you're 100% in commodities, you're at lows. So you're either going to sell low and buy high, or you're just going to stay low. So you just have no moves on the table. Well, Frankie, they didn't make any money this year. What happens to their goals if they go every year without making any return? Well, not only are they making no return, but to your point, Bob, when you said they weren't having any income from gold, they're actually losing. They have negative interest rates because they have to pay these fees just to even hold it in a safe somewhere. So they're not making any income from their investments, and it's not making any growth on their investments. It, it completely hindered their plan. Yeah, because, I mean, inflation's going up every year. Things are going to cost more in the future. Just think about when you go to the grocery store and that box of cereal. Sometimes it's the same size, the box is the same size, but then you look at that bag inside. It's a lot smaller, along with things like medical costs, all these things. I mean, if you're going to be retired for 30 years or so, there's a lot of costs that are going up. And if you're in something like gold that's not really growing, especially right now, you're in big trouble. You know, I think a lot of times people view gold as a hedge in a portfolio, but the only real hedge that I've seen is when you own bonds that come due. So when you have high quality bonds that have a fixed rate of return, in other words, you're gonna get income, you're gonna accrue income every day, you're gonna get a check every six months, and the bonds are gonna come due and you get all your money back. That's the only real hedge there is against any type of financial situation. So it's really about not just putting it all in one asset class, but having several asset classes, having fixed income, right? Having a portfolio, a diversified portfolio of stocks, you know, across asset classes and within asset classes. So, Frankie, what uh, what were the next steps that you took for these folks? Absolutely. So, what we did was we we got out of the gold, <laughs> and what we did was we moved them into the diversified portfolio, which did include a commodities fund that held gold. Now, I like to hold my commodities in a fund like that because one, it's a lot more liquid. You wouldn't believe the process to sell this gold. I mean, the paperwork, the stamps, the <laughs> the oh, <yeah>. notaries. <laughs> you have to offer your first child, <laughs> but it's a lot easier way of getting your money back and still having that, you know, that safety of having, you know, a little bit of a hedge. And I'm looking at your proposal here, Frank. You're, they're going to go from generating zero income a year to over $13,000 a year in income. That's a pretty significant jump just in cash flow that we know at the beginning of the year that comes in hell over high water. Absolutely. And it's also nice because, you know, they're getting older. They don't really want to be working every day for the rest of their lives so they can start scaling back a little bit. You know, when you can rely on your portfolio to bring in some income, you don't have to be, you know, up at the crack of dawn getting into the office going to work. 
Well, it's so much nicer when you have a, a check of income coming into your account as opposed to a paycheck where you have to go in and work nine to five, five days a week, 52 weeks a year. You know, having that income generate from your investments, have your passive income stream, you know, come in every day, you know, crew every day is such a great feeling. Something that we baby boomers appreciate more than you millennials, Frankie, I can tell you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I would really enjoy just hanging out and collecting some income, Bob. <laughs> Duly noted, Frankie. Duly noted. Duly noted, think- yes. <laughs> How about their estate plan, Frankie? What kind of shape was their estate plan in? They actually did not have an estate plan. And they that was part of it. They did not have a will. So part of what we have to do is, you know, now we're working with getting them an estate attorney, getting them a plan, deciding, you know, who deserves the uh, the benefits at the end of it all? <laughs> Who's going to end it with mm-hmm. the money? <laughs> yeah, they're all the big things. Well, great job on this, Frankie. I'm talking about great holistic advice. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself as well, I need to generate income on my portfolio. You know, I have to account for inflation and retirement, medical costs, all the things that are going to happen along the way. I need a will. This is your time to get a full holistic plan. We have a couple slots left. If you want to be one of Frankie's financial friends, give us a call. And if you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, this is the exact review we'll do for you. We're going to take every statement that you have. We're going to analyze all your investments, build you a personalized portal so we can give you a holistic view of things, model out what retirement should look like, how to get you there. And we're going to do a full analysis on your portfolio with our famous portfolio x-ray. We're going to look at income. We're increasing this couple's income by $13,000 a year. Can we help you optimize or increase the income on your portfolio? We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of fees that own that goal, a lot of expenses associated with a lot of investments out there. What fees are you really paying on your investments? What hidden costs do you have in your mutual funds, annuities, high cost products? We're going to break down all the costs to make sure you're not being overcharged on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. Do you have too many eggs in one basket? Are you sitting with too much cash? Do you have too much money in gold? Do you have too much money in the market? We're going to show you all the pitfalls in your portfolio to make sure you're properly diversified and protected. Then we're going to tie it all together and run the numbers to determine, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our team has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. We have a few slots left. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. You can text us or call us at 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for retirement, our team will create for you your own personal 360 financial portal. Just give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. You can text us or call us at 844-752-6692. Well, another great show. And Frankie, why wouldn't everyone want to be one of Frankie's financial friends at this point? I mean, you got to be crazy not to want to be in that club. It's an exclusive club. <laughs> Very exclusive club. <laughs> well, thanks many for being- Many want. <laughs> what was that? So many want to join. <laughs> many want to join. That's true. It's true. There's definitely uh, a backlog to get in. Uh, well, thanks for being on the show this morning, Frank. Thanks for having me. Big Bob, what's on uh, tap for uh, what is left of the weekend? few last minute shopping details, Rye, for uh, the big weekend next weekend. But otherwise, uh, I'm just going to relax today. Oh, I'm so behind on my shopping, but relaxing <laughs> sounds better. <laughs> well, great show. As always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.